in this tutorial we study the basic pillars of indian evidence act if one surveys the entire indian evidence act it is evident that it stands on these six fundamental pil pillars they are relevancy admissibility competency credibility burden of proof presumptions in this tutorial we will give a very a brief survey of this fundamental pillars coming to the first pillar relevancy the term relevancy under english dictionary is totally different from the meaning which we should take when we read indian evidence act the term relevancy doesn't means connection or relationship the term relevancy under indian evidence act means those facts that can be used to prove the case before the court nothing else section 6255 of indian evidence act list out certain facts which shall be used which shall not be used to prove the case before the court a lawyer or a judge to to establish a fact to prove a fact to come to a conclusion that a fact is proved they take only the aid of those facts that are expressly mentioned to be relevant under the indian evidence act nothing else now coming to the next pillar admissibility the term admissibility refers to the persons who who are alone entitled who are alone entitled to speak about relevant facts this principle is spelled out under section 59 and 60 of the indian evidence act it means only recognized persons can talk about relevant facts nobody else and coming to the next issue competency competency means the mental state of a person who is permitted under section 59 and 60 to speak about relevant facts thus it is not the mere compliance of admissibility test the person who is giving who is permitted by law to testify relevant facts must be mentally fit state it means he must be capable of understanding the questions put to him and he must give rational answers the test is giving a rational answer understanding the question giving a rational answer it is irrelevant about his age his ability the, if he meets this test that's it and next basic pillar is credibility the term credibility refers to his relationship with the case his interest in the outcome of the case the way he deposed the facts the way he withstood the cross examination and his status his character his behavior all this would be taken to measure to appreciate the facts which he deposed in the court of law and next burden of proof burden of proof means on whom the obligation to prove the case rests upon generally as per section 101 of evidence act person who demands the court to give a judgment in his favor about the existence of a right burden lies upon him this is a basic rule there are many rules which offer some exemptions exceptions Th that's a very big chapter now coming to the last pillar presumption presumption means an inference the court can draw based upon proved facts in the absence of evidence or in the absence of evidence on a particular point or a fact the court need not remain silent it can definitely draw certain inference basing on available material facts and arrive at truth these are dealt under section 114 primarily and there are many examples illustrations provisions that talks about presumptions presumptions are of three kinds primarily may presumption shall presumption and conclusive proof may presumption means court has a discretion under certain circumstances whether to believe or not believe whereas a shall presumption it's a direction given by the law upon proof of a particular fact to believe a particular thing as a true and burden rests upon other side to disprove it conclusive proof means once it is directed by the act the court shall conclusively prove a particular fact court shall not allow any evidence to be given to 
rebut it. These are uh, the basic pillars of Indian evidence. Science. That's the end of it.